Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to an investing report brought to you in association with the BNZ. Today I want to have a look at South Canterbury Finance and explain to you nine reasons why I think the government should look to wind up South Canterbury Finance. Just some background. Alan Hubbard, the owner of South Canterbury Finance, was put into statutory management just over a week ago. And it's not just him and his wife, but also companies he's associated with, including Aorangi Securities. But South Canterbury Finance itself, which has a government guarantee extended to the end of next year, it is not in statutory management. And it's continuing to operate. In fact, it's planning for a life beyond the end of the current guarantee, which is at the end of December next year. I want to explain now why I think there's nine reasons why the government should look to limit its losses and wind up South Canterbury Finance. Firstly, South Canterbury Finance makes loans that last for about 18 months to two years. Personal finance loans and capital and equipment loan to small businesses. It's pretty much stopped lending on property. But most of the terms of these loans are 18 months to two years out. That means it's making new loans now that are set to mature after the end of the deposit guarantee scheme at the end of next year. So we already have the risk of a funding maturity mismatch. That's where the loans are due to mature, yet the funding behind those loans is due at a different time. And that's a dangerous thing for any financial institution. So essentially, South Canterbury Finance is continuing on as if it will have a guarantee after the end of December, or that it can survive with the debentures after then. Secondly, it is employing new people and incurring costs, which whoever is behind it will have to be behind if there's a problem come the end of next year. There are new staff being employed, new loans being made. That's the second reason why I think the government should look to wind it down. If it wants to reduce its risks and its potential losses, because remember the government is standing behind South Canterbury Finance right now and needs to stop it to make sure that new costs, new loans, new staff are unemployed before it gets going. Thirdly, it's clear now that whatever happens with Alan Hubbard, he is no longer behind South Canterbury Finance. The statutory manager owns his assets and controls them. Secondly, he said he wants to sell down his stake. And the one thing many would argue that South Canterbury Finance has going for it is the mana and the backing of, of Alan Hubbard. He won't be there, certainly after the end of next year, and that's one of the big issues for South Canterbury Finance. Fourthly, it will not have a guarantee after the end of next year. Now, at the moment, it can continue to roll the debentures that it has, about 1.3 billion, and a good chunk of those are due before October. Now, already South Canterbury has managed successfully to roll those debentures, at least for a year or so. But that's because, of course, people have a government guarantee on those funds, and they're getting 8%, or in some cases 8.25%, pretty strong return, guaranteed by the government. The question will be, come September, October of next year, whether South Canterbury Finance can roll those debentures again without the aid of a government guarantee. I'm arguing without that guarantee, without Alan Hubbard behind it, South Canterbury Finance will find it very difficult. And that comes to the fifth reason. It currently has a B- credit rating from Standard & Poor's. Now that is six notches below a triple B- rating, which is generally seen as a threshold for an investment grade credit rating. So, six. South Canterbury Finance needs to be upgraded six times before, before the middle of next year to have any chance really of surviving on its own after the end of the guarantee. I think that's extremely unlikely. And this comes to the seventh point in my list of nine reasons why South Canterbury Finance should be wound up. Alan Hubbard said in a statement last week that he was expecting to confirm by June the 30th, remember that's Wednesday, that he will have found an overseas investor to put, he didn't say how much, but most people say between 180 to 200 million dollars into South Canterbury Finance and fresh capital. Yet he has said time and again for the last two years that a new investor was coming. Yet every time we come to the announcement, it's not quite there yet. And this statement, already criticised by Sandy Meyer, his chief executive, about putting a deadline in place when one wasn't necessary, is also straining credibility, particularly now that he no longer actually controls those, those assets. The statutory manager does. 
The eighth point, that I, another reason why I think South Canterbury Finance should be wound up, is that it's clear the related party dealings and transactions that involve ARE Securities, South Canterbury Finance and various other personal interests of Alan Hubbard are incredibly interwoven. We already know that scales and helicopters companies that were owned by Alan Hubbard have been put into South Canterbury Finance, that there have been loans between these various parties at various times, that ARE Securities and South Canterbury Finance have been linked together in various property development projects, and that loans have been made back and forth between the two of them. We don't yet know the depth of the related party dealings. Suffice to say, the ones who have looked most closely at it are quite worried, and they include Standard & Poor's. And finally, the ninth reason why I think South Canterbury Finance should be wound up. Frankly, time is up. If South Canterbury Finance was going to survive after the end of next year, it needs to have had its funding in place now. It would have needed a triple B minus credit rating at, at least now. It would have needed that new investment from the new investor now, yet it faces weeks, possibly months of delay because of the appointment of the statutory manager. I think the time is up for South Canterbury Finance and the government needs to limit its losses by deciding to wind it up. That doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be put into receivership, but it needs to stop making new loans and appointing new employees. Sandy Meyer is an excellent manager. In fact, he has excellent experience to be the statutory manager for South Canterbury Finance. He was the statutory manager for the DFC and has widely been applauded for that role. Sandy Meyer could easily continue on in that role under the control of the government, as it already is, and essentially wind down South Canterbury Finance over the next 18 months to two years, while there is time for an orderly wind down. At the moment, however, South Canterbury Finance is continuing on as if it has a future after the end of the guarantee. I don't think it does. I'm Bernard Hickey with an investing report brought to you in association with the BNZ.